Welcome back everybody to another scan time training video and this week what we're going to do is we're going to answer the question that we asked from last week where we found a bug inside of our Mitsubishi program when designing functions. Before we get into the answer what I'd like you to do is hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and if you're looking for any PLC training go to www.scantime.co.uk. Right let's get into it. So last week what we did is we created a function that would convert degrees C to degrees F and it all worked fine we did 10 20 30 40 50 100 and yada 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 however when I typed in the value 10,000 degrees C we then received the output 4,924 so why did it receive that output and not whatever 10,000 degrees C is when multiplied by 9, divided by 5, and then added with 32? Well, it's all about binary and it's all about words. If we think about 10,000 in binary, this is what we actually receive when we say 10,000 in binary. It's this value right here. That there is our 16 bits and that there equals 10,000. Now think about how our formula works. What we then do is we take that 10,000 and we multiply it by nine. And when we do that, we receive the value 90,000. Now, if you're not aware, the maximum value that we can receive inside of a word, which is signed, which in our case it is, is 32,767. Well, 90,000 is a lot greater than 32,767. So what is 90,000 in binary? Well, 90,000 in binary is actually all of these bits here. This here is a 32-bit value, a double word in a sense. You've got your 16 bits over here, and you've got your other 16 bits over here. And you can actually see that this bit right here, which is 65,536, is actually on. That's because that bit is needed to create 90,000. Now what the PLC then does when we divide that output by five is it doesn't divide this entire double word by five. Remember, we're only dealing with word instructions. So what it does is it divides this value by five and ignores this word right here. So what do we get? Well, this value here, from binary to decimal is actually 24,464. If you divide 24,464 by 5, we get 4,892.8. Okay then. What Mitsubishi will then do is it will effectively remove that 0.8 and we'll then get 4,892. It then adds 32 to that, and we then receive 4,924, which is what we're getting right here. And it's all because we are dealing with words, and in one of our results, we've eclipsed the value of a word, the maximum value of a word. So how do we fix this? Well, what we can then do is we can change the values from a word to a double word, and that there should fix it. So let's have a go at doing that. Let's come offline. Let's go back to our project and let's open up our program over here. We are going to change these to double words. So I'm going to right click degrees F and I'm going to go to its property. And I'm going to change it from a word which is signed to a double word and then say OK. This allows us to work all the way to 2.14 billion or something like that. Say OK to that. And there we go. Now let's go to our local labels and let's change these to double words as well. Just gonna copy that, paste that into here. Go over here, everything else is okay there. And then if we go back to our POU, everything is okay here. And I've gapped these by two, so it's D100 and then D102, D104, D106. That's because when we're dealing with a double word inside of Mitsubishi, it's going to utilize D100 and D101, D200 and D201, because they are 16-bit values. Combine two of them together and we get our 32 bits. Let's save our work, compile, and then let's download that to the PLC. 
Now you'll notice when I've done a compile here, it's came back with a couple of errors. Well, 10 in fact. And these 10 errors are actually referring to these D100s and D200 values. This is because Mitsubishi sees these as just 16 bits. So for me to create this as a 32 bit value, I'm gonna open up my global labels and I'm gonna create a var global and I'm gonna create deg C1. And that there is gonna be a double word. And I'm gonna give this the address D100, just like that. That is then gonna assign that D100 and then D101. I'm then gonna copy this, or I'm going to new declaration after D102, new declaration after D104, D106, and then D108. And you can see it going up in twos. And the reason for that is because it's double word. If I then just create another one, new declaration after, I'll then change this to degrees F1, and then I'll change that to D200 this time. New declaration after, new declaration after. And then I'll do it once more. There we go. Now, when I go into my program, I just close this window down here. I can then change this to degrees C1. I can then change this to degrees C2. And then do the same for the rest of the registers. There we go. And then for the output, change these to the Fs. go now let's save our work let's compile all of that say yes to that and there we go no errors no warnings no check warnings everything's okay now let's download this to the PLC say execute yes to that close that down close this window down when it allows me and then let's go online now these data registers are working with double words so now if I put in 10,000 it'll work perfectly fine so if I then just go to modify value there you go you can see the maximum value 2.147 billion I told you I was right 10,000 and then let's set that value and there we go, 18,032. That has now rectified our problem. So again, when you're working with data inside of the PLC, you've got to be aware of every sort of eventuality. And if there is an eventuality where you may eclipse the value in a word, the maximum value in a word, you need to think of a way to overcome that. And that's where we can use double words. This is again just an example of showing you how easy it is to come across an error or a bug inside of a program when you haven't thought through the full process that you're going to be working on. And then when you're working with values, when you're working with words, double words, it's very easy to make a mistake and have your program mess up somewhere down the line. So it's making sure you are fully aware of what you're working with when you're dealing with data. As I mentioned previously, if you want to learn more about PLC programming and you have limited to no experience in PLC programming, then have a look at our PLC Programming for Industry Training course. This course here teaches you everything from the very basics, allowing you to create programs with just standard contacts and coils, and then allowing you to progress further to the more advanced side of PLC programming, and then also progressing to designing an entire program from scratch with more advanced programming control whilst dealing with a lot of data just like this, including data buffers, indirect addressing, and a lot. So if you want to learn PLC programming from scratch, go to www.scantime.co.uk, go to our e-learning section, select the PLC programming for industry training course, and then enroll today. We look forward to seeing you on board, and we look forward to seeing you again next time. See you later, guys. Stay safe.